So we're often asked the question, what is the best Rolex dive watch for me? In today's video, I'm gonna try and help you establish what's the right watch for you by showing you a lovely collection of Rolex sports watches. Okay, so before we start to talk about Rolex dive watches, I thought I would show you what I'm wearing today. It's not a dive watch, it's probably one of my favorite watches, and it's this one here. It's the Rolex Daytona Cosmograph. Now, those of you who've watched our videos in the past will know I'm lucky enough to have one of these. I had one with a black one and with a white dial. Probably one of the most desirable watches in the range, and this is a 2019 one we've just taken in had just one owner, it's unpolished. I think it's been worn about five or six times and it is an absolutely beautiful watch. I am very biased, I love the Daytona. I think I love it, it's a nice slim watch, it's look, it's a chronograph, it just works on every angle and you can see why it is such a popular watch. However, we're not here to talk about the Rolex Daytona, we're gonna talk about sports dive watches. And I thought I'd start off with the 50th anniversary Submariner. This is the LV, or more affectionately known as the Kermit. So the Submarine itself, a stainless steel watch, 40 millimeter case size, with a rotating unidirectional bezel, made out of 904L grain stainless steel, and an automatic with a, a chronometer, so um, very accurate to within minus four to plus six seconds. But as we go to the more modern watches, they've got accuracy down to two seconds per day. But this is the classic one. This is the 50th anniversary one. And it has this lovely uh, slim case slugs there. It has the aluminium bezel here in, in green. The beautiful black dial, and of course on the LV, they made the plots for the hour markers slightly bigger. Lovely and slim as well. So it's the sort of watch when you have it on your wrist, you're not really aware that you're wearing it. Lovely and easy to read with a luminous dial on it there. Of course, the date function there with a two and a half times multiplication, that Cyclops very typical look to a Rolex. Aside from that, the dial's not too cluttered. Of course, it's telling you it's a, an Oyster Perpetual, it's a chronometer, and of course, it tells you this one will take you down to a thousand foot, which I think will be enough for most of you. The crown on the side here, you can see it has the crown guards, and this crown screws into the side of the case to ensure it's watertight. Now, as a tool watch, Rolex wanted to make a watch was strong. It could take the sort of punishment that divers would give it. Or indeed, many sports people and people that wear these day-to-day, -day, whatever they, they choose to do with their life wearing their Rolex, they are really a watch for all occasions. Good enough for James Bond, good enough for a dinner suit. It can be worn really for anything anywhere. The bracelet they put on this, of course, was the Oyster bracelet. And you can see here, this one is a 2009 one we've, we've fairly recently taken in stock. And again, they're much stronger bracelets than the Jubilee ones, and they don't sort of tend to droop in the same way through wear. You can see the crown there on the back of it. And they have a deployant clasp there. First of all, you have this safety clasp over the top, so ensure it doesn't come off when you don't want it to. And then here, you can see it's the pressed steel there. As when we look at the more modern ones, you can actually see where the changes were made. Now, for those of you that watch my, my videos regularly, you'll know I've got a big wrist. It's an eight inch wrist. And so this one is absolutely perfect for me. But it's a size, traditionally as a gentleman's watch, but it's a size that ladies wear as well who are wanting something a bit sporty. Um, because it's so slim, it doesn't look too big on the wrist, but isn't it a just gorgeous looking watch? And I'll actually hold it up to camera here so we can see there. You just get an idea of how slim it is. So for most people, you know, wanting a Rolex sports watch is the Submariner. And of course you have a choice. Do you go for one with a date or one with a non-date? Both absolutely lovely. I think the non-date with its very, very uncluttered dial, it works very, very well. You can't go wrong with either of them. And it's a really good, I think, starting point for this, this conversation uh, for a Submariner. So these, again, more traditionally with the black dial, but these are really quite collectible. You also get the flat four version of this with the slightly wider tip on the four there. Again, they're even, even more expensive and very much for the, the sort of collector market. So there we are. That is the traditional um, Submariner. In around uh, 2010, they brought this new model out. 
and this is what we you know, would call the ceramic uh, Submariner. So they still kept their 40 mil case size, but the actual lugs here are slightly wider. In fact, if I just put the other one beside it, you can just see the two together there. You can see this has what we call the maxi case and the other one here, slightly narrower lugs. And when we go and look at the 41 mil shortly, you can see they've almost gone back somewhere between the thinner one of the older model and this maxi case here. But um, the maxi case, a very, very popular look, a slightly wider uh, case on the, on, on the wrist, so very, very comfortable to wear. So this is the watch that has uh, been discontinued. In fact, this is a 2021 that's just come in. So one of the last of the models before it was replaced with a 41 millimeter. But in essence, some of the things they actually did to this watch compared to the old one, um, the dial here, slightly different look to the dial with the, the plots on it there. The bezel here, while still stainless steel, the aluminum insert was replaced with a ceramic insert. And the reason I think for that is to make it more durable. The aluminium ones could scratch, they could get sort of small dents on it. The ceramic one is much, much stronger. It's not indestructible, and if you were to drop this on the floor or something, it could crack. But in reality, if you hit a concrete floor with a watch, that would probably be the least of your worries. But again, a very, very strong watch. The bezel here, like the green one, it's a unidirectional bezel. So it, you, when you turn it here, you can probably hear that click. But as I turn it, I can really appreciate the sort of engineering that's gone into this watch. And when you, you know, you compare the Rolex Submariner to the Amiga, to the Breitling, to the Tudors, and to really all of its competitors, this really has it. It has just a lovely, lovely feel to it. Very, very easy dial to read. The contrast of the white hands and the white hour markers against the black dial date there again with its two and a half times multiplication and just a lovely color balance of black against the silver i think it works very well again you have the crown guards here you have that rolex logo on the side and again finished in 904 l grade stainless steel polished on the side here so it has that sort of combination of of a polished and a brushed look the bracelet on the submariners are that satinized brush look. No polished center links in the Submariner. So again, remembering it's a sort of a tool watch. But one of the other features that was introduced to this watch um, was what they call a glide lock function. They did this because they wanted to, again, make it very easy for a diver or someone wanting to take the swimming to easily adjust it so it would fit over a dive suit. Now that is for those that use it for that purpose. But for most of us, it's very practical because with different temperatures as your wrist contracts and expands, sometimes a watch can be a bit tight on your wrist. So no tools required. All we do is we pull that, and as you can see here, this just slides. And you can just get that micro adjustment for you, particularly those of you who have traveled, different climates, etc. you can get it just right. But the other thing too, is when we look here at the deployment clasp, you can see there, it's solid steel rather than pressed steel. So again, just another change that Rolex have made. The bracelet is just that little bit more substantial and it's just a really good overall piece. Again, this has a very well tried and tested automatic chronometer movement in it. Being a 2020 watch here, we've got that accuracy down to plus or minus two seconds today, which I think, you know, for an automatic watch is really, really good. But let's see this one on the wrist. So comfortable, really such a comfortable watch to wear. And there we go. You can see how the bracelet tapers down there. And it is that sort of size and slimness that, you know, it will fit underneath the shirt cuff, which when we see the deep blue, deep sea later, it's not quite the same. In September, 2020, they introduced the 41 millimeter. Now, when you put the two watches beside each other, I don't think it's a whole one millimeter of difference. It's almost, I think, half a millimeter. So the size difference is nothing to get excited about. But the difference is really here, is the case lugs. If you look there, and I'll bring the other Submariner back again so we can compare the two. You can see here, the black one with a maxi case, and then the new one there. It's just that little bit slimmer So this we call affectionately the 
it's the um, Starbucks one, um, or it's the more modern version of the of the of the Kermit, as it were. Um, black dial, green ceramic bezel. So, what are the key changes they made to the watch? Well, of course, 41 over 40, case lugs slightly narrower. Um, the bracelet here at the top, where the top link joins the case, used to be 20 mil. It's now 21 mil. Um, the glide lock bracelet remains the same. However, internally they took the opportunity to introduce a new movement into it. And again, uh, building upon that success and the knowledge they have of the movements, they increased the power reserve from 48 hours up to about 70 hours. So that's quite a big difference. Um, otherwise, they made it slightly more resistance to shock um, and also more resistance to magnetism as well. But aside from that, it still looks and feels very much the same. Uh, the Starbucks one is, is one of the kind of hard to get watches. Uh, this particular one we've got is a, a 2021 watch. Um, prices have come down on this watch quite a bit now from where they were, um, but they're still you know, significantly over list um, because they're, they're very much uh, weightless watches. But there we are, that familiar Submariner look and feel. It really is a lovely, lovely watch. I'll just hold it up to camera there and you can see just similar to the, the other Submariner, very, very slim on the wrist. So there we are. So they are three Submariners, the classic, the 40 mil discontinued, and now this latest 41 mil. So we go from Submariner to Sea Dweller. So again, for those wanting a diver's watch. The Submariner would take you down to a thousand foot, which I think is enough for most. But the Sea Dweller was again a tool watch where the traditional Sea Dweller, even going back through the years and even to today, it goes down to 4,000 foot. So even the 50th anniversary is the same. So the Sea Dweller itself, I don't have one of the classic models in stock, but I've had many and I've actually had my own one. It was a lovely, lovely watch. Um, main difference is you'll see with this one here, is that instantly the, the key difference you'll see is there's no Cyclops on the date there, giving you that two and a half times multiplication. This particular model is the SD4000. I have had one of these myself. Uh, I had the old model for a few years and I remember when I started this business back in 2014, this model was then out. It ran from about 2014 to 2017, so quite a short range for a watch and it took me a bit of time. I was very loyal to my, my original, the 16600 Sea Dweller. When this one came out with a ceramic bezel, but otherwise very similar, I thought, yeah, that's nice. And eventually I made that change and, uh, and, I, and I had it for some time until I, I foolishly sold it to a customer for £6,000 and I've been unable since then to, to get it back. Um, I absolutely love this watch and I'm very sorry to say that anybody who's interested in buying this one, it, it's not currently for sale. It's, um, there's a few watches we have in the, the sort of collection at Edinburgh Watch Company that get tucked away and get brought out and sometimes customers can prize them off my wrist. However, what is this watch? Well, this is the SD4000, again, 40 mil case size, but let's turn it on its side there because instantly we can see you have the automatic helium escape valve. So this is technology that's built into the case for those, now forgive me for those who are divers, I hope I'm getting my facts right here, but when this watch is you know, submerged very, very deep into the ocean, then pressure builds up, uh, helium builds up into the case of a watch and into the, the dive tank. And the purpose of this is that if you didn't have this and you came back up to the, to the sea level, then you know, the watch could explode. And so Amigas have a, a helium valve on the side, the Rolexes have an automatic one. So that's one of the, the functions of that. And of course, the ability to go down four times deeper than a submariner. But in order to resist that sort of extra pressure, the case has to be slightly thicker. Uh, in the deep sea as well, the glass is much thicker. But this one is just a lovely size. 40 mil, ceramic bezel, most beautiful, almost matte black dial. Um, again, the 904L grade case on it and the Oyster bracelet there, again with the, the glide lock uh, function on it there. Prices of these have gone up. They're really quite high now for these because again, it's such a, a limited production, but you can see there. 
really quite striking model. And I think this is one to consider if you're looking to one to collect. Ideally, I'd like to see it as a wearable investment, something that, you know, that long term would do very well, perhaps something you'd you pass down to the next generation, because I think if this watch is well looked after, it will it will outlast you. And uh, they are really quite superb watches. And this is another Sea Dweller, and it is to celebrate 50 years of the Sea Dweller. Now we've had a few through the years. We've had some double reds in recently, which were absolutely lovely watches. And the, the Submariner, the single red, had the red writing on it as well. Well, you'll see for the 50th anniversary here, if you just look closely at the dial there, you have got Sea Dweller written in red. And um, it's not a limited edition watch, um, but who knows when Rolex will stop it. They may decide that it's, that it's had its time now. And in which case, if it does, then it, you know, it will go through the roof. But right now, it's a model that uh, you know you can go into your store and buy today. So celebrating 50 years of the Sea Dweller, Rolex decided, well, let's do something different. So first things first, the case size changed from 40 up to 43 millimeter. It still went down to 4,000 foot, still made in stainless steel. Well, that's not quite true because in fact, just after that, they actually introduced stainless steel and gold in the 50th anniversary, the, the Sea Dweller model as well. So that gave something a little bit different to perhaps someone that maybe had a Submariner wanting something a bit bigger, but this is the one we sort of sell most of. Again, classic black. So stainless steel bezel, ceramic uh, insert here, the red writing, lovely luminous coating on the hour markers and the, and the dial there. Um, not as wide there as the, the old Maxi case, more like the new uh, Submariner uh, 41. Uh, slightly wider case lugs there. Again, this crown that screws into the side of the case and that familiar glide lock clasp there. Again, making it so easy to adjust. And a very, very comfortable watch to wear in 43 millimeter. Now, a couple of these watches I'm actually shooting with you today, we've actually sold, and this is one of them. And I thank you to our two customers who bought these watches for allowing me to hang on to them a little bit longer so I could make this video for you. But this will be getting posted tomorrow and will be enjoyed uh, by a customer. Um, and I hope you'll have many years enjoyment wearing this most absolutely lovely timepiece. So that is the SD43. And again, let me hold it up to camera there as you can see. It is slightly thicker, but it's not too thick. Um, it perhaps is that little bit more wearable than the deep sea. And for someone who has a big wrist wanting something a bit bigger than the Submariner, maybe feels the Submariner is a little bit too slim, then I think the 50th anniversary is a really a good one to get. So we now come to perhaps the, the daddy of the Rolex dive range. What could Rolex do to improve, to have something as a bit of a flagship item for, for a diver's watch? So around about in 2007, they introduced the Rolex Deep Sea. Now this was an absolutely incredible watch, still made today. And again, it's evolved. We're now into the third generation of the Deep Sea, but first came out, I think around about 2007, 2008. So fundamentally, still a dive watch but a dive watch with a difference. A watch that would take you down to 12,800 foot. So that's over three times what the 50th anniversary does and over 12 times more than a Submariner. How do they do that, you ask yourself? Well, again, with incredible technology, with a thicker case, with a helium escape valve, with a new ring lock system, with a much, much thicker glass and a number of you know, features to allow that to happen. This particular one we've got here is the Deep Blue. Now, the Deep Sea originally came out as a black dial. And around about, I think, 2014, the Deep Blue came out, affectionately known as the James Cameron, named after the gentleman that did the film Deep Blue. And Rolex sort of sponsored that, I believe, and, and, and gave a watch as, as part of that to the, the film production company. What a watch. And I know it's a big, chunky watch. And my customer who's bought this watch knows it's a big chunky watch, but isn't it just beautiful? 
Now, I, I say that word beautiful. I've been watching my most recent videos and I've used that word far too many times. So I'm trying not to use it too often, but this watch justifies that word. My God, it's lovely. So when you look at the ocean, of course, that lovely deep blue color, then as you go deeper and deeper and deeper, it goes into black. And that's exactly what this watch does. The writing on the normal deep sea where it says deep sea is normally white on this particular one it's in green so you've got this lovely range of blue black green white on that dial it is quite something again no cyclops on this one ceramic bezel unidirectional you can see there at the top you've got your gas escape valve there as well this has all the features you need to be a very very serious divers watch now, this one, this particular one's in stickers here, but you can see the side there, you've got that helium escape valve, and you can see it's much, much thicker on the wrist. There's no way around it, really. That's what it actually has to do. So in 2007, that's when the watch first came out, and then the Deep Blue came out in around about 2014. And then in 2018, they brought out the second generation of that. And the main differences there were the introduction of the new movement again like many of the watches there that increased the power reserve from 48 hours up to 70 more resistance to shock more resistance to magnetism very slight change in the case and also at the top here where this link joins the case it went from 20 up to 21 millimeter um, bracelet stayed much the same um, however this while it does feature the glide lock clasp it is the daddy of the design because with the other one, you would just pull this down and then adjust it to suit. With this one here, it's designed so that you can actually adjust it with it still on your wrist. You can see the teeth there, and then you can see as I slide this in and out. So you can actually do that when it's on your, on your wrist, which is really quite a clever design. So I carry this size off absolutely perfectly. It's just great for my wrist size. And is it a watch I'd want to wear every day? I'm not sure I would want to wear it every day. I've got a lot of customers that do because they're just used to it. They're just used to wearing big Breitlings, big Amiga, Planet Oceans, and the Deep Sea is just fine. Um, would I have it in my collection? 100%. Why not? Isn't it? I mean, it's just a lovely, lovely looking piece. I'll hold it up to camera and then you can see this one's not going to fit underneath your shirt cuff, but you won't care because I think you'll just want to look at it. But what we do here, if I just lift this little lever up there and then if i pull that you can see i put that back in the middle there i can adjust it i haven't got to take it off and i just push that back in and i get it to the right position and i close that so that is the rolex deep sea again this watch is sold i know this one's going to be very much enjoyed in fact my customers had one of these before and i think he kind of missed it and wanted, wanted this one back again so that is the rolex deep sea so there we are, a quick look, or maybe not such a quick look, at our Rolex Dive Watch collection. And hopefully this is something that if you've been thinking about getting yourself a Rolex Diver's Watch, then it may just give you a little bit more perspective and help you to think about which watch for you next. Now these watches we get coming in all the time, so please have a look on our website at edinburghwatchcompany.co.uk or if you're looking for one, give me a buzz um, and then next time we get one in, we'll, we'll let you know. But there we are. That brings us to the end. Hope you enjoyed your coffee or whatever you were drinking. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully you find it helpful. If you have, well, then why not give us a thumbs up? And if you like these videos, this is only one of 500 we've done. We're doing one every week now on Friday. Why not just click and subscribe and you'll see more of us. Meantime, thanks for watching. Take care.